So the next step in building our login screen will be to try and trap events. So we need to trap the user clicking on the submit button. So the user will enter in their details and then click the submit button. And when they click the submit button we want to validate their entry against our hard-coded strings of username and password. So in order to do that we need to, ha to add in the event or action listener code into our application for the submit button. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go up to our class definition and at the moment we have week 10 example 5 extends JFrame. We also want this class to implement the action listener. So not only is this class going to extend the functionality of the JFrame, the Java JFrame, which is the blank frame of a window that we're using, we also wanted to implement the action listener code so that it can handle events from the user clicking on the submit button. So that's the first part. Add in implements action listener. The next bit that we need to do is that we need to tell our submit button where to send its events. So in the piece of code where we actually go and create the submit button, right under that I'm going to say button submit dot add action listener and where is the button going to send its events well we're going to handle the events in this class so I'm going to say button submit dot add action listener and we're going to say this and remember that this keyword is a self-reference it's telling this button object to send its events to this class and this is where we're going to have to implement the action performed method. Okay so let's add in the action performed method. So public void action performed and that takes an action event as its argument. So this is where we're going to trap and handle the events from our login screen. So we only really have one button on the screen, that is the submit button. So let's add in the code to trap the events from that. So as in our previous examples, we can do that with an if statement. We can say if e dot get action command. So this will get the actual event that has taken place. And we can check to see whether the text of that event or clicking on the button matches the submit button. So we can say e dot get action command dot equals and we can put in the text of the submit button so we can say well does that action event equal equals submit was it the submit button that was pressed or clicked so we can have an if for that that's the only one we want to trap at the moment so if the user clicked on submit then what do we want to do well we want to check to see if the details that the user has entered are correct. So we can use another if statement to do that. So here we'll say check to see if name and password are correct. So we'll say if. Now how do we get the text that the user has entered? Well, remember the user has entered the text name into txt name, which is a J text field area, and they've entered their password into txt password, which is a J password field. Now, what we can do is we can use methods that are part of those classes to get the text from each of those text fields. So we can say txt name dot 
get text. So txt name dot get text, and that's going to give us back a string, and then we can say dot equals, and we can check it against our username that we've already predefined, which is s username. Okay, so what's happening here? Well, we're getting the text from the text field, the text, the name text field and we're doing an equals comparison so this is an operation that happens on strings so we can say dot equals s username and the s username of course is defined at the top of our program up here as Joe blogs okay so we want to check the username but the username has to be right and the password has to be right so we'll do a similar test for the password we'll say txt password dot get text so that's going to get the text from the password field and then we'll do a comparison dot equals and we'll make sure that it's equal to the password that we've defined above as well so if the text that's in the text field is equal to the proper username and the text that's in the password field is equal to the proper password then it should be okay so we now have a valid user so you can just say valid user and what I'm going to do is do a little system dot out here just to check to see that this is working so we'll do system println um, and we'll say valid user I would also like to check to see if that's the if the opposite is true so I can say else and in here I'll say system dot out a print ln and I'll say invalid credentials okay so we have added in the implements action listener to our class declaration we have added an action listener for the button and passed over this which means it's going to send its events back to this class which means that we have to provide an action performed method and that takes an action event and we can test that action event to see was the submit button pressed if the submit button is pressed then what we do is we test the text that's in the name field and the text that's in the password field against our hard-coded username and password if they match it's a valid user if they don't it's an invalid user and we're going to just output a message here so let's compile and see does this work okay so let's try an invalid user first so the username should not be Steven and the password should not be password and I'm gonna click submit and we get invalid credentials okay let's try Joe blogs and the password should be Java and look we get valid user okay so now that we've tested that and we're capturing the events and we've got our logic right for um, user validation the next thing we can do is begin to add some functionality into our application to do various different things when we get a valid user and to do something different if we get an invalid user okay so what do we want to do if the user is a valid user well we want to change the message on the, di on the dialog and we also want to change the lock icon to be an open lock so what we're going to do if it is a valid user 
we are going to change the label, the message label. So we can say LBL message dot set text. Remember, this was blank to begin with, so we're setting the text on this, and I'm going to say credentials correct. Okay. And then what I would like to do is I'd like to change the padlock icon. I'd like to change it to the open one. So I'm going to say LBL image dot set icon. And I'm going to set the icon to the image that shows the open padlock. And to do that, I'm just going to reset the image to a new image icon. And this time, I'm going to specify the path to my image file that shows the open padlock. So that is lock-open.png. Now, when I change the image icon, it won't refresh the screen straight away. So the new image will not be displayed. I have to force a refresh. I have to tell the screen, look, I've changed the image on this label refresh and to do that I just say LBL image dot update UI and that tells the label to refresh itself on the screen to draw the new image. Okay now the other thing that I might like to do is once the person has entered some valid details I might want to just empty out the text boxes so kind of blank out the text boxes again and reset the user back to entering in something in the name field. Just for the purposes of our little tests, we're going to do that. So in order to do that, I'm just going to say text name dot set text. And I'm going to blank that out. So just double quotes with nothing in them, blank string. And I'm also going to say txt password dot set text and again just give it a blank string so I'm kind of refreshing or clearing out those text fields and the other thing is I want the user to be back at the beginning again so I want the carrot or I want the focus to shift back to the name text field text field so I'm going to say txt name dot request focus. And what this will do is it will put the cursor back into the name text field. So I can just start afresh again. It just basically kind of clears out any information that's been entered and resets back to the beginning again. So that's what I want to do if it's a valid user. So I set the label message, I set the text on the label uh, the label message. I change the padlock to an open padlock. I update the UI to refresh the image and then I just do a kind of reset of the screen. Okay so what do I want to do if it's an invalid user? So for an invalid user well I want to do something similar. I want to set the text of the label and I want to reset everything back to the beginning again. So I'm going to say LBL message dot set text and this time it's an invalid user so I'm just going to say invalid username or password. I don't know which one was invalid but one of them was. Invalid username or password for that I want to make sure that I set the padlock back to being a locked padlock. So I can just copy some code down from above here and I can say LBL image dot set icon and I want to make sure that it's the locked one. So I can just change the name of the image file that I'm loading here. And of course I want to update the UI. So again just copy some code down from above. And I will reset everything back again. So let's copy those three lines of code down and let's clear out all of the 
text fields. So let's just comment here uh, and we'll do clear up. And let's just put a little comment in here as well to say, okay, we're just clearing up. So now in my action performed, I've got some code for if the user enters in some valid credentials and I've also got some code if the user enters in some invalid credentials. So let's compile this and run. Okay, so let's first of all try and enter in some invalid credentials. So the username should not be Stephen and the password should not be password. And let's click submit. Okay, great stuff. So we get a message invalid username or password and as you can see both the name text field and the password text field have been cleared and reset and we're back at the beginning again. The cursor is now flashing in the name text field. Let's test it out and see what happens when we get the correct username and password. So Joe blogs and the password is Java and click submit. And look, we get credentials correct and the padlock has opened. So the new image has been loaded into the label that stores our padlock image. And again, we've reset or cleared out the text fields and the cursor is back now in the name field. So what's next to do? Well, what we'd like to do is we'd like to store all of the invalid logon attempts and we'd like to also store the correct login attempts or the successful login attempts if this checkbox is clicked. And we'll do that in the next video.